This is what you guys want, right? You want Slick Rick stuff? You want, this is what you want. It's like Burger King right now. You tell me what you want, you'll get it. So all you gotta do is comment section down below. Say, what do you wanna see? You wanna see this thing on the dyno? You wanna see it at the racetrack? You want us to just take it to car shows? What do you want? So we're gonna get this thing buttoned up here. We got a small checklist that we have to really knock out, go over, nut and bolt everything, swap a couple parts out just like here and there. But overall, Slick Rick has an appointment for the dyno this Friday. Very exciting. Friday dyno means Saturday is going to be a big day. You guys want to see this thing on the dyno? You're going to have to wait till Saturday to see it. But what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to comment down below what you think this thing is going to do on the dyno. What do you think it is horsepower capable? Now, I am going to break your hearts a little bit. We usually don't turn them all the way up on the dyno because there's like no return on investment with that. You got to look at like risk versus reward. At the track, there's going to be times where this thing is full tilt, like all out, max effort, which is fine. That's why you build them this way. But at the dyno, you're really doing that just to get a number. Uh, I don't know if that's really worth it. To me, it's never been worth it. We've set some good numbers, like with the black sheep with the hydraulic roller record. And this is what cracks me up because I just kind of keep quiet when it comes to this. But you got guys out there that are like, oh, we beat the black sheep's hydraulic, hydraulic roller record. You know, we, we made... I think we made like 22 or 2300 horsepower. Someone made like 2400 horsepower. And they're like, yeah, we beat it. Thing's a piece of shit. Well, we did it on 30 pounds of boost. At the track, we run 55. We've seen as much as 65 pounds of boost. So what kind of power you think it's making there? We don't turn them all the way up on the dyno. We're playing you guys. We're, we're, we're messing with you. We're just toying with it. So all the LS guys, right? I, I don't really consider myself an LS guy anymore. I know we got LS nasty. But we're, we're like small block guys. They're just like, oh, oh, we set the hydraulic roller record. Well, well did you really? Because we didn't turn it all the way up. So we're going to take this to the dyno. Comment what you guys think it's going to make down below. And I don't know how much we're going to turn it up. We definitely want to get a solid baseline. So when we go out and test, we can make some laps. But as far as like pin in the gate, full tilt, max boost, I doubt we'll do that. Because you don't really get anything back. You can get a general idea, get your fueling close. You know, making, I'd say like up to about 75%, 80% power of max power. And then uh, the rest, you know, we've just always done at the track. So you guys know what the rule has been that they're just like, hey, don't be working on this thing without Matt around because you guys know how I'm a little hard on parts, whether at the racetrack or whether we are here in the shop, I like to tear some shit up. That's just kind of what I do. So let me call Matt and see if I can get approval to work on this because if I can get approval, then I'm going to have this. I, I got to do a couple things to it. So I don't want to have to do it and hide it from Matt, but we'll give him a call here and see if I can work on it. Here we're calling Matt. You guys want me to put his phone number on on YouTube? What's up? Hey, do you want me to put your phone number on YouTube? Uh, preferably not. Oh, okay. All right. Any Anyone at home that has any tech questions, please call. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, oh, God. Hey, I'm supposed to go to the dyno on Friday with Slick Rick. Uh, I'm just here uh, requesting approval uh, just to work on a little bit. We got I got to mess with the rear gear on it, and uh, I think like just nut and bolt it after that. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You want me to cancel the dyno appointment? I mean, I mean not unless I can come down and work on it. So I'm with you. How how quick do you think you could get here? Um, how many miles is your shop away from mine? Like 280. How quick do you think you could get here if you if you were to ride Ava? Um, actually, I mean she is pretty fast, so uh, let me see. I'll uh, I'll work something out and I'll let you know. Okay, well I'm gonna just tinker with it a little bit. All right. All right. All right. Well, you guys heard it here. I I got approval to tinker with it, so there are a couple little things I can do. We'll see how fast Matt can get here, and hopefully he gets here quick because if we can get some of this stuff knocked out, then we'll really be good. Dead. All right, guys, it's been a while. We've been busy working. Matt's back in the videos. What do you have to say oh. to the people? I'm just recovering from a near-death experience. Another one? Yeah, well, it's the first time I've been sick since my splenic injury, and it's... Been oh, rough. does that have an effect on that? Oh, something had an effect. Wow. No. Keep your guys' spleens intact. That's uh, our first tech tip of the day. Yeah. So we're here with Slick Rick now, and uh, I guess we're gonna put it up on Projax and uh, 
start working on her. I, we're, we got in the race car room here. It's pouring rain out, so we didn't have the opportunity to, I don't want to get it completely wet. Could put it on a lift, but at the racetrack, we're working on Pro Jacks. What's our to-do list? We got, I think, to wire up Mac valve. Mac valve, the battery disconnect. Uh, we got to swap it out. Rear gear. Rear gear. We just need to, I guess we're just going to, we, we haven't put our eyes on it yet, and we don't want to go to the dyno, go to the racetrack, and everything else is good, and then there's an issue, and, and we just yeah, didn't no address it. Time. We, uh, we did, we went over it pretty well before PRI. Make sure all the uh, CO2 stuff's tight, and then we'll do, like, we'll start configuring that, and, like, uh, actually put CO2 in the bottle and go through and test everything, make sure there's no leaks or anything through there. Uh, we do have to swap out all of the plugs on the oil pan. They're just, like, temporary plugs with... Uh, yeah. uh, Permanent actual, plugs. Actual caps, yeah. So we will drain the oil, put fresh oil in there. You haven't heard it run on all eight yet. I have not heard it run on all eight. Some people were giving me shit. Well, they were giving everyone shit. They were giving all of us shit. They're giving you shit. They're like, what idiots couldn't even figure out that this thing wasn't running on eight cylinders? We knew it wasn't running on eight cylinders. We shouldn't say anything. Yeah, we knew it the first time we fired up and the EGTs were dead on that. Uh, cylinder and then we didn't have and they were like oh well, why don't you just get the firing order we did yeah i called pro line and they got you know because that's one of the things you know we were uh curious about is if it had the correct firing order but you got to think too like we fired up last time and it ran for like two minutes and we just got it running so we weren't checking any of that and then when we fired up for pri it was what 11 yeah 12 o'clock we're supposed to load up so like a little bit of diag we're, we're not really trying to we spent like an actual legitimate like hour of trying to resolve the issue and had the issue resolved yeah no we, we checked all the, the basic stuff and everything we didn't have a noid light to check it you know we, we just went over through and checked everything and you know uh luckily it was a firing order which is very surprising because like the egt like the plug didn't show it at all that's one of the things that uh threw me off was the plug was bone dry like i'm talking there wasn't a speck of methanol on the plug so you know usually if it could have, i guess it's been the camshaft you know just perfect uh valve timing events where the intake valve was closed on those two cylinders and it was pulling the fuel out of it uh because there was zero uh methanol on the plug it looked like it wasn't firing at all um there's just a very very small amount of oil on the plug so things like that but like i said we didn't really we didn't look at it, and, and we're not perfect. We all, we all make mistakes. Well, I mean, I think one thing is that we do, unlike a lot of other channels, is we show like 100% transparency on what's going on. There, We could have easily said, oh yeah, it's fine, it's fine, and then just fixed it and not said anything, but we keep it real, and that's, I think, like... I don't think we've ever tried to really hide anything, like... No, but then, like, you got you guys at home that don't have a 481X running on Holly with... 16 injectors, MSD 600, and you're like talking shit like, oh, oh, oh you fucking idiots, why wouldn't you just do that? And I'm just like, you know, you gotta look at the source a lot of times. We're not perfect, we don't claim to know everything, but I, I think we do a pretty decent job at what we do in all aspects, whether it's racing, building cars. Yeah, I think we do pretty good for the fact that we do a lot. I mean, you guys think a lot of these guys, they, they go pick their car up and they run it, you know, we're, this thing was literally disassembled to just a chassis, modified the chassis, built the whole car from it, so. Yeah. All right, well, I guess we'll, uh, well let's fire it up, because you ain't heard it yet run on all eight. Yeah, no, I love, right, right before I'm about to work on something, I like to get a lot of methanol fumes in there, that way, get you in the spirit. I like that. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But do you have any opposition to me firing it up right now? No, let's hear it, let's all do right, it. Right. Guys, the first thing that we're doing is we are replacing our battery disconnect. These are like the e-stops. We've had issues with these before, different brand. We're not going to mention them. A lot of people have had issues with these, different brand. Uh, these are the ECU Master specific ones, and we damaged this one. Is that fair to say? We, did, we didn't damage it. We just tested it farther than, like, this, this car, um, the starter, I mean, it's like 400 amps, like, it draws a metric ton of power and the these have been used and proven on motorsport stuff but not with a starter like that yeah and this is this is a very um this is like the first generation of the club one and it did not have a diode so 
uh, there was some flyback voltage that damaged the uh, current sensing circuit. So it thought that it was drawing a lot more current than it was. So it would just kick it off. Now you're actually working with EC Masters on some R&D stuff, aren't you? Yeah, so we're working on um, the new drag specific software and the EMU Pro 16. So we're trying to get it to where it's um, more drag orientated in the software like you have all your drop downs for your normal stuff like your bump box and your boost control and some other stuff that'll be really cool like it'll have a, a automatic configuration for your PID loop for your boost control so instead of having to like do all these test modes and do all this you just turn that on and it'll run it through the loop and it should be able to self correct just like uh, if you would like a drive by wire throttle body or something because um, every, every setup is different depending on where you have your uh, Mac valves your pressure wastegates everything's different so you really have to tune your uh, PID loop very closely so with that it'll just kind of run it through automatically and you won't have to go through and manually configure it and adjust your P term and your D term and um, everything else to where it's it, it'll be a lot more user friendly and it'll be like you know you click it and it's one and done now I actually wanted to start the car before we worked on it but Matt said we should work on it first so Matt just um, got that installed so then plug everything up fire it up then while we're working out, put on a battery charger. But overall, by the end of the day today, we should be 100% ready to load it in the trailer tomorrow and uh, go to the TKM Performance for their hub dyno uh, and just kind of like shake her down, see how it goes. So, um, all right, I'll let you guys hear it for a little bit. Get the, get the spicy air back in action. This actually helps cure sickness, so Matt doesn't understand. I'm just trying to get him healthy again. Yeah, we haven't even heard this thing on the two-step or nothing. And then park. Yeah. Just, just because you said it. <laughs> Alright, so I don't have the coils or nothing on. I'm just going to crank it over. Yeah, I'll, I'll see if it builds a little pressure up here. Okay. Curious here before you try to crank it. On what? Are you using the peak current? 960 amps. What? To someone that doesn't know anything, what does that mean? Compare that to their starter on their Honda Civic at home. 100 amps. This is this is like nine Honda Civic starters. Kind of turn in everything on initially. So go ahead and uh, now this the starter is going to draw a lot initially, but then it'll. Uh, it probably doesn't have that continuously, but we can see, uh, ooh, whoa, got a little wild there. Current load, 12 amps. Peak load, 20 amps. So uh, go ahead and crank it. You're gonna crank it whole? Yeah, don't try to start it or anything, just, yep. All right, 360 amps. Cranking it, 860 amps peak. What is it now with the, that going? Uh, 20 amps with a pump and everything. So, put up on the uh, on the uh, well, that worked. You ready? Try to crank it? Yeah, yeah, go ahead and start it. We've been tuning it with the brake clean. Yeah, and, and you also have to think um, with that pump being amount so high as well, like if the fuel gets lower, like we ain't run it in a few weeks. Yeah, so. It loses prime. All right.
air. Spicy! Woo! Spicy air! If that don't get you better, that you're you're Man, that thing has got some serious return spring. <laughs> that dude it does. Do you see it? I had to like the other day I didn't couldn't figure it out which way it went. That thing sounds like a completely different motor. Oh yeah, no, it's yeah. Before it had like a little hiccup too, now make up. Do you think it'll go like maybe like fourteens, like maybe as fast as the black sheep? I mm, I don't know, black sheep runs pretty good. <laughs> Gosh dang, brother. What do you think? Your overall thoughts? We have like three things left to do before we're like dyno and track ready. Yeah, check the rear gear. Wire Ch up the little mic valve right here. Change the uh, plug. Yep. On the... Oil pan. Change the oil. Change oil. That's it. How much? That's it. A little, little tiny, tiny bit of tuning. That, um... Whew! Woo! Man. Spicy air. I don't know about y'all, but if that don't get y'all excited, if that doesn't, if you watch this video and you're not like, man, you know what? I'm just going to go down and subscribe. What I need you to do is don't ever, don't ever listen to this. I'll make you rewatch this video with the sound off. You got to go down there and click that subscribe button. And we'll let you keep hearing this beautiful sound of 481X plus 140 millimeter turbo. I think it sounds better because it's in a third gen, don't you? Yeah, no, if this was like a Fox body, I don't think it sounds near as good. I, I totally agree. Uh, Steven at Rock Solid Motorsports killed it on the turbo kit. Wow. Dieter's Custom Finishing killed it on the polish. I mean, this thing right here is, it's literally tougher than a fifty steak. All right, guys, it got late in the day working on this thing. I'm just going to end this video, wrap it up, and send it out to you. Tomorrow, we will show us wrapping up on this thing, getting it loaded up in the trailer, ready for the dyno. And after that, it's Black Sheep, Glizzard, and Red Lobster stuff. So thank you guys for watching. You guys got to hear a little bit of Slick Rick. Go down, subscribe to the channel. We'll see you guys in tomorrow's upload. Oh.